Hi, this is the last video on the electrochemical cell. This video is a part of the personalized learning unique project that I'm running. Um, this video would address the learning outcome number four and five that you can see on the screen, which is interrelated. They're pretty simple uh, learning outcomes. Uh, it's the ability to predict whether redox would happen spontaneously or not. Um, I've already talked about this in the previous video where I performed the calculation of the EMF. And you could see that um, um, when we have uh, a cell that works, the general, e general EMF um, uh, that can be calculated would end up being a positive value. Now, if the EMF value is a negative value, it's simply an indication that the cell will not work. Um, that is an indication whether the redox is spontaneous or not. We can further support this and obtain an energy value which is the free energy, also known as Gibbs energy or Gibbs free energy calculation using the E0 value for a particular cell. Um, okay, moving on, quick revisit. So what is this electrochemistry all about? It's about electron transfer um, between two uh, metals immersed in the solution of the ions that produces electric current, and we can measure this in the form of EMF. All right, so EMF stands for electromotive force, E0, E0 specifically it's conducted in a standard conditions. Um, it's potential difference between two metals and there's a table that's provided to you that has all the metals and some non-metals has been measured against the standard hydrogen cell which would carry a value of zero. Okay, standard cell, we've talked about this, we've looked at this, you can see the cell that's shown in front of you here um, carries an overall EMF of 1.1 volt. That's a difference in EMF value between the zinc and copper in a working cell. Okay, so we've talked about cell convention. So there's some basic um, information about cell convention would be um, the anode is always written on the left and the cathode is always on the right and the single lines separate the phase which is the electrode and its electrolyte and the double lines usually represents the salt bridge that separates the half um, um, uh, cells. Now take note that the left, anode on the left and cathode on the right is only used for the cell conventions. It is not a practice um, to draw um, an electrochemical cell with the anode on the left or cathode on the right specifically. It simply means that it's up to you, you can put the anode on the left or the right for the drawing or the construction of the cell. Only when you are expressing it in the form of cell convention, which is what you see on the screen right now, there is and uh, you have to follow the anode to be on the left and the cathode has to be on the right. Okay, so if you're still unsure about this, make sure you watch the uh, first video again, where I've uh, shown you how to uh, construct a cell using the cell convention and the reverse of it as well. Okay, standard electrode potential, we looked at the formula, we looked at both formulas and I've um, uh, uploaded a video that um, shows me solving a particular question that will enable us to calculate the overall E not or the EMF of the cell. Okay, positive EMF will always be obtained if the reaction is spontaneous. Okay, and this can be related to the standard free energy change. Um, I hope you could recall your um, um, reaction feasibility uh, topic where um, a negative Gibbs sim uh, simply means the reaction is spontaneous. Gibbs equivalent to zero which means the reaction is at equilibrium and a positive Gibbs would simply mean that it would favor the reactants as a result the reaction will not take place. Okay now how can we take the um, EMF value and obtain a free energy calculation? The question for this part of the topic is usually very simple, very easy, very straightforward. They would just ask you to calculate the Gibbs free energy. The challenge will be however is to come up with the correct EMF value. Okay, um, some example, um, um, I'm not going to use the silver nickel, I've prepared another example um, um, for you guys um, uh, um, that I'm going to do now. Just revisiting the steps, 
First, what do we do when we are calculating the free energy? We have to write the ion electron equations. This is really important. You have to make sure that the um, electrons are balanced between the two sides of the cell. Um, you have to determine which part is undergoing oxidation and reduction, which is quite important in deciding um, the, how does the cell work. We derive the E naught using the information in number two and plugging it into the formula. And obviously you would um, pick the values from the standard reduction potential table that is provided in page 11 of your data booklet, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, we'll combine this to form the redox equation and we'll derive N. N here stands for the number of electron that is transferred between one mole of um, um, oxygen and one mole of reductant in the cell. Okay, and we will use that to calculate G. So how do we calculate G, which is the Gibbs free energy? This is the formula, G is equal to negative NFE. Negative NFE stands for, N is obviously the number of electrons. I'm just gonna quickly change that to pen. So number of electrons, here we will obtain this number of electrons using the balanced equation. So that's quite important to remember. You need a balanced overall equation, all right? Overall equation is key because sometimes um, when you don't balance it, you may realize that one side, uh, a particular species on one side of the cell may release only a single electron, whereas on the other side will have to receive two electrons to be reduced. So we do have to balance it, we do have to multiply it. I've already explained the balancing of the equation when I've solved the question for you in the previous video. Now moving on to F, F here essentially standing for Faraday's constant and Faraday's constant for one mole of substance is 96,500 coulombs, okay? Um, and the EMF, the E naught is obviously the overall EMF of the cell. Now when we combine all these three, it's quite important to take note that the Gibbs, the, the formula itself will churn out the Gibbs um, energy value in joules. But normally we would express G in kilojoules, okay? So you may want to remember that, that this is generated in joules. So if the answer requires you to give it to you in kilojoules, then you do have to divide by a thousand. That's the reason in some books what they do is they divide the Faraday constant by a thousand. And what they use for this formula is, so if I divide by a thousand, that's cancelling two, that's going to move into 96. Point, sorry, 96.5. So this is what they normally would use um, in a formula. So it's up to you what you want to use. I just want you to be alert and just want you to know that the Gibbs free energy value that this formula will turn out will be in joules. So please remember that. Okay, now I want to move on to the questions I've prepared for you guys. Okay, I'm just going to try to solve this for you. Maybe I should not have done that. Okay. All right, so let's see. Uh, this is a fresh question. It's not the same question as the one that's uh, um, um, solved in the previous video. Um, so we want to see um, everything solved again. So I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. So this is a good chance for you to try to re-understand what you have um, um, learned in the previous video. Or what you can do is you can pause the video right now and try to solve A, B, C by yourself. And then you may want to play again and see the way I solve it and probably just want to check your answer. That's a that's a good practice for you. Okay, um, what pen color shall we pick? I'm gonna go for red. Okay, so obtain the ion electron equation. So before I can do that, I want to decide which is anode and which is cathode, which is pretty important. Um, again, I'm gonna do the same rule, oil, rig. So anode, cathode, oil, simply stands for oxidation is loss loss of what loss of electron and here a reduction is gain i'm sorry about that bad handwriting okay and not and cathode so that's tin immersed in a solution of tin ions nickel immersed in a solution of nickel ions so now the question is who's undergoing oxidation and who will be undergoing reduction now, if you look at the uh, table, I'm going to look it for tin equation that has tin in it. There you go. I'm going to highlight that for you. So that's tin's equation. Okay. 
so it carries a value of negative 0.14 now we have to locate um, nickel where are you nickel <laughs> oops right above okay right above so what happens now we know that the value of uh, nickel's reduction is more negative than the value of tin's reduction that means when we pair these two up nickel will undergo oxidation tin will go undergo reduction which simply means nickel will be losing electron to tin so i can mark it here that this is the movement of electron that means this is the cell that's undergoing oxidation and that is anode and this is cathode or simply the negative charge and the positive charge remember negative means the source of um, electrons so what's who's undergoing um, oxidation that's nickel and who's undergoing reduction that will be our tin so you're supposed to obtain the ion electron equation so again let's do for anode first so I'm gonna put that in anode so it's undergoing oxidation so nickel solid will be losing electrons to form nickel ion take note it's two plus not just plus all right so that's two electrons okay now the for cathode for cathode uh, in exam you can please write the full term as anode and cathode don't just use a and c i'm just using it because i might not have enough space and it is a little challenging to write using this tablet okay so cathode again tin is undergoing reduction so the ions the tin ions that's in the electrolyte will be receiving two electrons to form tin now please make sure that you know the number of electrons that's being received you can there's a variety of ways you can check you can look at the charge that there is in the solution you can also double check with the half equation that's provided to you in your data booklet so there's no reason for you to make mistake here so be very alert and be very careful um, i didn't put in the states which is quite crucial aqueous to solid okay done so what's the overall equation we need to balance it but in this case two electrons re released two electrons received it's pretty balanced um, it's the same so i just have to combine and cancel off the electrons so that would be nickel solid plus tin ion equals to give us nickel ion two plus equals to give us tin solid that's the overall equation the, the number of electrons is two each I'm supposed to calculate the emf so who still remember the formula so up to you you want to pick which formula so i would like to use the formula that adds up so what's um how do we add up so the standard e naught is equal to the oxidation cell plus the reduction cell okay please be very familiar with the formula there's two type of formula one requires you to change the sign which is the one that i'm using right now and the other one that requires you not to change sign it's up to you which one you want to use so what's the answer for this now which cell is undergoing oxidation it's the nickel undergoing oxidation which means this equation that you see on this standard table is being reversed so i need to take the value and change it to positive which means we change it to the opposite sign so 0 0.23 plus and who's undergoing reduction tin is undergoing reduction and tin has a value of negative 0 0.14 we will use that value as it is given to us okay so the answer here will be um, just starting out my calculator 0 0.23 minus 0 0.14 the answer here the value of this cell will be 0 0.009 positive 0 0.09 volt okay so 9 volt so that's fixed you know it's a positive value that means this cell will work spontaneously now comes the d part d which is the uh, the, the core aim of uh, this video 
how to calculate the Gibbs free energy for the overall re cell reaction per mole of equation as part B. Now, we know that for each mole of the reaction, you will have two electrons being transferred. Now, what's the formula? Can somebody remember the formula? G equals to negative NFE naught. Okay, so how are we going to calculate this? Very simple. Um, we're going to take negative N here stands for the number of mole of electron for every mole of um, uh, reaction. So simple here, that will be 2. So it's negative 2 multiplied by the Faraday's constant, which is, which is 96,500 multiplied by 0 0.09. Okay, so what is the Gibbs free energy value here? If I were to calculate this very, very quickly, negative 2 times 96,500 times 0 0.09. So that gives me negative 17370 joules. So 17,370 joules, and if I were to convert that to kilojoule, that becomes divided by 1,000, 1, 2, 3. So 17.37 kilojoule per mole of reaction. Okay, so this is the Gibbs free energy value, and that's how we calculate it. If you notice, this is pretty straightforward, it's pretty easy, but it does depend on your understanding of the electrochemical cell, and it also depends on you knowing how to use the table and the formula to calculate the overall um, enon. So this reaction is possible, it is spontaneous because it has a positive EMF value and a negative Gibbs free energy, which means it, at a room temperature, or a standard condition, um, it will go as it's written, which is in the forward reaction, which is what we written here. Okay, so thank you very much. Could try a few questions uh, that, that will be posted after this. Uh, try the checkpoints, um, and I think you can do this. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Thank you very much.